What's up everyone? I'd like to welcome you to the first episode of Dozer Gaming and Internet News. I'm your host Dozer and today's top stories include big changes to the Game Awards. Show host Jeff Keighley talks of changes for the highly anticipated event, including the much needed topic of security. Will this be enough to stop another stage crasher? Lethal Company, an indie game made by a solo dev, continues to grow in popularity. What's the story behind that? And with the holidays in full swing, a survey of what kids want for Christmas reveals surprising results, showing that kids want game subscriptions and in-game currency more than actual new games. What is up with that? Well, stay tuned and I'll give you the details. The Game Awards is less than a week away, taking place this Thursday, December 7th. Nominees were announced back on November 13th with Baldur's Gate 3 and Alan Wake 2 both having the most nominations, each with eight categories. This will be the 10th annual Game Awards, so it's a pretty big milestone for the show. And with that, some changes, according to show host Jeff Keighley. During a live Q&A, Keighley was asked if there would be any improvements to the security measures, particularly with those who walk on stage. For a quick recap, Keighley had not one, but two stage crashing experiences within the span of a year. Most notably, the infamous Bill Clinton kid walking on stage alongside game director Hidetaka Miyazaki after Elden Ring was awarded Game of the Year back in 2022. You know, real quick, I want to thank everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed Orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. What boggles my mind besides the ease of a rando walking on stage is the fact that it's already been almost a year since that incident. Where the f*** did 2023 go? The second stage incident occurred on August 22nd during Gamescom's opening night, where two individuals hopped on stage with prepared t-shirts in hopes of replicating last year's meme, only to be met with booze and internet cringe and to be quickly pulled off stage back into obscurity whence they came. I'm not allowed to say anything about it. Uh, yes, exactly. All right, well guys, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Really disappointed. They're disappointed. Now, I'm sure it feels bad for the two individuals, knowing they went through all the trouble of making custom t-shirts, only for the camera to tactically cut away. Better luck next time, I suppose, although I'm sure I'm speaking for most of the gaming community that any additional attempts would just be face-palmingly cringy and should just not happen. Will the security measures be enough? We'll have to wait and see. Keely doesn't really go into any specifics of the extra measures for, well, security reasons. You know, we don't want to talk about that stuff too publicly just because, you know, it's security and we, we definitely have plans and we're trying to do all we can to kind of keep me safe, but also everyone, you know, watching the show um, in the audience, people participating in the show and everything. Believe me, that's something that is top of mind for us, but we also want to put on a great show that, um, you know, celebrates these games and celebrates our love of video games. So that's an important thing to keep in mind as well. On top of upping the security, Keeley stated that they're trying to keep the show runtime shorter than before while also moving away from its branding of being a show of quote unquote world premiere game announcements. We often put up those like cards, world premiere, world premiere, and we're kind of moving away from that just because I think everything's kind of just, is it a first look? Is it a announcement, et cetera, et cetera. So we just treat it all as kind of great game content. Keeley also shared that the Game Awards is considering adding more categories in the future, ideas including best remake and best supporting actor. He does also share concerns about additional categories, which mostly revolve around the fact that sometimes there might not even be enough games made within the year to flesh out those categories. Also take the current nominees for the upcoming show, for example. If Best Remake were its own separate category, would that have pulled Resident Evil 4 Remake off of Game of the Year? Does a game that is nearly one for one a remake even deserve to be listed among the other nominees for Game of the Year? What do you think? Comment down below. Speaking of categories, there's also a little bit of controversy around the category of Best Indie Game and whether or not Dave the Diver is qualified to be nominated for it. Keeley explored the topic during the Q&A, acknowledging how the meaning of being an indie game could vary from person to person. Admittedly, he waffled a bit, but, you know, he brings up a good point. Uh, what defines an indie game? Is it the budget or team size? Is it a studio's affiliation to a publisher or its financial backing? Or is it defined in the game itself, its look, its feel, and the, whether or not the scope is big or small? The tweet announcing the indie game nominees was actually hit with community notes on Twitter, stating, Dave the Diver is technically not an indie game. The vice president of Nexon, the South Korean video game publisher behind Dave the Diver, Kim Tae-hwan, has stated that. 
It may look like an indie, but it's not necessarily so. Dave the Diver, for those who don't know, is developed by a studio called Mint Rocket. And although relatively small as a team, Mint Rocket is considered a sub-brand and division of Nexon. Keeley goes on to say it's a fair discussion as to whether or not Dave the Diver is truly independent, but in the end, he considers it, quote, independent in spirit and is relatively small in scope, leaving it to the Game Awards jury to decide it based on less strict criteria. He shares, too, that there is still a separate category, Best Debut Indie Game, to recognize teams releasing their first ever game this year to help spread the chances of highlighting more indie games. But what do you think? Should the guidelines to pick Best Indie Game be properly outlined and strict? Or is this entire thing seem born from a needlessly nitpicky stance that shouldn't bar a great game from being recognized? Please share your thoughts in the comments. In other news, popular game Lethal Company continues to pop the f off. If for some reason you have missed all the hilarious clips that have been posted online and have no idea what that game is, here's a little taste. Oh, there, 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 there. oh no, it's coming! It's coming. Oh my god, it's so bad! Oh, that's a bug. Basically, Lethal Company is a multiplayer game where you can team up with up to four players, or more, if you mod the game, and your goal is to collect stuff from monster and trap infested buildings, with the goal of meeting a quota in the span of three game days, or it's game over. At first glance, this game looks super bootleg. One would think that one guy made it, because it was made by one guy. The game was released late October from a solo developer by the name Zekers. The game picked up a lot of steam on Twitch in November, showcasing that the ultimate charm and sell of the game is not by its deep narrative or amazing graphics, but by its emergent gameplay. In other words, the combination of its frantic situations and hilarious encounters that players run into as they progress through each day. I myself absolutely hate scary games. I'm a scaredy cat, leave me alone. But the sheer amount of hilarious clips of players' misfortunes was enough for even me to try it. Although Lethal Company is still in early access, Zekers has already confirmed plans to continue development for the next six months, adding more content and refining it with the main goal of being infinitely replayable, which is pretty exciting to hear. And you know, kudos to Zekers at age 21 being able to release this runaway hit as a solo dev, you know, mad props to you. But have you guys gotten into the craze? Is Lethal Company this year's Among Us success story? Are you guys already over it and are the type to hate on things just because they're popular? Let me know down below. Let's talk. Let's talk in the comments. All right, so to end this week's episode, let's do a lightning round. Here's a collection of top news that have full-blown articles written, but can literally be summed up into three sentences each, all to save you the trouble of reading the fluff. First up, we have Five Nights at Freddy's. Not the game, the movie. It continues to do well in the box office. It was released late October, just in time for Halloween, and it's currently the highest grossing horror film of 2023, grossing 80 million on opening weekend, and is currently sitting at over 295 million in ticket sales as of this recording. Compare that to its measly $20 million budget. FNAF fans are definitely eating good this year. Next up, the developers of the online card game Marvel Snap state they will continue to operate and work on the game despite their publisher Newverse restructuring, aka laying off hundreds of workers. Newverse is a subsidiary of ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, but with ByteDance announcing their departure from the gaming space, a wave of mass layoffs began at Newverse, leaving the publisher unsure how long it will continue to exist. Will Marvel Snap be able to find itself a new publisher in time to keep the lights on? We'll just have to wait and see. Final story. A recent survey from the Entertainment Software Association, or ESA, shows US kids want in-game currency or game subscriptions for Christmas more than actual games. In a survey of 500 individuals ages 10 to 17, 72% of them confirmed they wanted something game related. But of that 72%, 39% wanted game subscription services, confirming the rise in popularity of services like Xbox Game Pass or PS Plus. Meanwhile, 29% want some kind of in-game currency, while only 22% want an actual new game. However you feel about the current state of live service games, it looks like younger gamers are helping to steer the industry further into a world of V-Bucks and whatever the heck Roblox sells. And that wraps up today's video. If you have any thoughts or questions, let me know. Got a new story that you're interested in seeing me cover? Share it down below. 
And if you liked what you saw, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I plan to upload new videos on a regular basis, so any support or feedback given would be much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. You all have a good one.